the NFL to Hollywood to fatherhood. Join me as I tackle my next journey in life, becoming Hollywood's next action star. That's right, I'm busting down the door. It's a big freaking back day today. We're gonna get it. I had a terrible recovery last night because I checked my whoop on accident. Not because I checked it, but I did check it out of weakness. It popped up. It said, we got some information about your sleep and it sucks. And I've almost bought into it, but then I thought, hey, if I could get after it on a day with 20% recovery and have a great performance, that could do something for the rest of my year because I'm committed to this thing. I'm not gonna adjust and just not lift because I'm not well recovered and I got three hours of sleep. I don't give a damn. Something's gotta go. I got a lot to do this year. I got a lot to build into. I got a grinder year. Something's gotta go, sleep. Well, if you don't sleep, you're not gonna get your gains. Piss off, science boy. If, you, if I'm super well rested and something else goes, I don't lift well enough or strain my body enough, I'm not gonna grow. I don't wanna be super well-rested, pencil neck dork, okay? We're out here getting gains, hitting back day. Did a little backwards walk, did some pull-aparts, some rear delt work, some calves, and now I'm ready. I'm ready to do some heavy pull-ups. I'm ready to do some, uh, uh, what are they called again? Uh, landmine rows to start with. I wanna get a little extra blood pumped in there, throw an extra movement in, three movements on this back day. And then I'm going to finish off with some bent over barbell rows. Um, we're going to get after it because it's going to prove something to myself that uh, I'm not going to let anything get in my head because I'm more powerful than this, this uh, very shriveled brain up here. Um, but it's trying to tell me a lot of things and, and sometimes it's not really cool things. So we're going to fight back, baby. Let's go get this. Landmine rows. Let's get it. Enough yakking. On the landmine rows, I like to do straight out to the side. So I'll find the right tension point, about feet shoulder width, grab the end of it, boom. Really good upper back work. Mm. Mm. And on these, I'm just getting a big stretch, slow tempoed reps, good squeeze at the top. I'm not trying to push myself on weight. On these, I want to get a nice, good blood flow into the back before I hit these other heavier exercises. Another big piece to this is just it sounded good to do. It sounded like, ooh. Yeah, I want to get a good big back pump today. Feel good. Ugh. And uh, you got to go with those spontaneous desires sometimes because it keeps you motivated in the gym. And those things will get you, cause you to create, to bring your greatest effort into the gym, get some better gains out of it. Find different ways to stay motivated. Find a little, in the middle of the workout, uh, find different little goals that you want to hit or visual outcomes that you're trying to get to. Maybe it's, that's months down the line. Maybe it's at the end, you just want to see yourself super pumped and, and know that that's taking you towards your long-term goal. It's giving you progress, giving you steam. Ah. Yeah. Woo! Mm. Ah. Running on fumes, baby, but it feels good. I'm telling you. If you can get to this weird place, 
Screw it, it doesn't have to be weird. Maybe it's just rare. If you can get to this rare place of really getting off to competing with yourself. And, and now it's, it's not just with me, it's, it's, it's against Whoop. Screw you, Whoop. You know, not screw you, you're doing great stuff, but you can't bring me down with a low recovery. I'm still gonna perform. I'm still gonna get after it. You're not gonna stop seeing me on here. You're not gonna stop seeing me showing up and getting after it and giving everything I got. Oh, come on. Let's go, Miles B. Where's my Bobby buddy? Got my boy Bo in here with me. This is my best buddy in the entire world, and he always will be. That's, that is Bo Burris. He's as man as they come already. He's one of the greatest men I know right now. Wanna go say, come say hi to these guys, buddy? Hi. Hey, y'all. This is a strong boy filled with an incredible heart. Loves everybody around him, stands up for people, looks out for his sister. I don't know anybody better than you, buddy. I love you. I'm trying to be more like you. Hey guys, I'm me. I'm Bo. But I know I just love you so much. But first, we all and Daddy's working out. That's right. Yeah. Daddy, I'm gonna go up and pull up weight. So last time I did 45 and 25, but uh, I want to go straight to 90 today because again. I want to push myself and go heavy. So my body just has to figure it out. Isn't that right, buddy? Mm -hmm. We tell our bodies what to do, right? Up you got it. Mm -hmm. Buzz is hanging out with Rio. Yeah. Uh-huh. Woo, here we go. Yeah, buddy. I'm all done with this. Yeah. So, if you talk to them, okay? Okay, I will. Thank you for holding it down, bud. I appreciate you. Feeling good, bud. You feeling good today? What's that? What's that, buddy? You want to touch it? You can touch it gently. Yeah. Well, I, I don't want to put, hold you up right now. Just, just touch the arm or something. Yeah. See, it's just a board. Yeah, those are called cargo shorts. Your mother is not the biggest fan of them. She made me get rid of all of mine when I was a rookie. Why what? <laughs> I didn't pee in it. It's just the shadow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, buddy, cargo shorts are the, actually the most tactical short that any man can wear. They're not um, liked by many women. In fact, my wife made me get rid of mine in my rookie year, which I had at least seven pairs. Uh, there's just so much you can stuff in there. And now as a father, too, I'm really missing out on cargo pants, man. I could be stuffing diapers and all sorts of stuff in there. So um, just a little history on how cool cargo shorts are. Practical, tactical. Awesome. Stylish. Question mark? Yeah, buddy? Hi. You're my best friend too, Bobby. <laughs> All right. He's just like me. That is just like me. You're growing energy. Yeah. Yeah. Energy, energy, energy. We got that today. Even when our whoop tells us we don't. We got energy, right, buddy? All the time. Woo! Woo! And. Oh!
<clears throat> All right. On the third set, I'm going to drop it down to 45. Try to get some more reps out of it. Ooh. Just get a little more volume, you know? But whether you're doing three reps or 25 reps on a set, what's going to lead to muscle growth is pushing close to or to failure. That intensity is the name of the game. So mix up the numbers. You know, if you don't feel like going super heavy on some day, lighten up, do some more reps. You may even get more of a pump out of it because there's more overall volume in terms of reps. But um, on the days that you don't feel like, man, doing five sets of 10 of this and that, and the other, just uh, load it up and, and you feel like you're short circuit in the process by just doing a few. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I touched it. You touched it, that's fine. Yeah, you can do both. You can look at it and touch it. That's a, um, that's a light. Yeah, it's a, it's a neon light designed like a dragon. That's right. Because um, dragons love tacos and that one had some salsa, so he's red because he ate some salsa and it's too spicy. Now he's breathing fire. He's breathing fire because he ate tacos and somebody put some darn jalapenos in there and it's too spicy for him. And he's like, <sighs> because dragons love tacos. He's doing that because dragons love tacos. And he was, he was so hungry and so excited to eat the taco that he forgot to check if there was salsa in there. And it's so spicy and he's like, oh, it's so spicy now. I'm turning red and breathing fire. You remember our book, right? He's a dragon. Yeah, you remember the, the book Dragons Love Tacos, right? I'm gonna buy this. Yeah. What's happening? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, you are. My buddy knows how to work hard. You're doing great. You're doing some calf raises, buddy. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Of course, buddy. Great work, pal. Are you good? You go, go ahead, go ahead. You go first, buddy. All right. So now I'm going to go to my staple pole exercise, which used to be the barbell row, bent over barbell row. But if you all have been watching my videos this year, you've seen the transition from the barbell row to the easy bar bent over row. I go um, underhand grip. Wait, do I? Let me see. Yeah. I go an underhanded grip on the easy bar. I'm able to load it up way more and get a really good contraction and pinch in my lower lats uh, as I pull it to my stomach. And uh, just feels good to be able to move more weight and I feel it more in the muscles that I'm actually trying to work. Those are great things to look for uh, when choosing an exercise. You know, if everybody does bend over barbell rows because it's a great staple and works for a lot of people, if you're doing it and you're not really feeling it in the areas so much, you're like you're not really getting a burn or it's like you, you reach failure before you ever really feel a burn in those muscles or whatever. And you're not really feeling them work a lot. Even when you're trying to squeeze them, maybe, maybe you should switch it up and just play with things until you find something that works for you. So this is a, this is a new staple for me. 
Oh, thanks, bud. You can just leave that right there. Great job. I really appreciate you, bud. So grateful for you. Whoa, you're balancing on that? That's cool. No, I'm not. Uh, that's fine. Oh, okay. All right, pal. I'll squeeze on in here real quick. Excuse me, sir. Thank you, buddy. Thanks you. Thank you. That's my guy right there. Can I brag on my son real quick? This is one of the, the, the coolest, strongest, kindest, and most forgiving guys I've ever met. Anytime daddy makes a mistake or I'm a little short um, or, or lose my temper for a minute, you say, it's okay, daddy. Did you know Bobby loves you all the time? You know, my, my buddy, he's teaching me things every single day. I tell him all the time, I'm trying to be more like you, Bo, because you have such a beautiful heart. And uh, you do such a great job at protecting your sister, at loving on everybody around you, at, um, at you're just, you're my best buddy in the whole world. Yeah. And I love you more than I can ever put into words. You know that? Yeah. Did you know your daddy loves you no matter how many good or bad choices you make? Yeah. Did you know that daddy loves you all the time? Yeah. Who else loves Bo like that? Jesus. That's right, buddy. Jesus loves you like that. Jesus is always with you. He's in your heart, buddy. Actually, 215. It's two plates, but I think this easy bar is 35 pounds. I've never fact checked it. I've never fact checked it on a scale. Um, but that's what I'm guessing. And I had reasons for it that I don't remember anymore. It's just always been 35 pounds in my head. Woo. Uh, woo. <laughs> Let me see if that's a, uh, I kind of forget. Yeah, it was, it was the underhanded grip. I forgot if it if I was supposed to. Yeah. Nice jump, dude. That's what I'm talking about. I forgot if I was usually doing the underhand or overhanded grip on that side to play with it mid-set, which broke it up in a weird way. I'll try to shoot for 10 straight on the next one, but I'll likely need three minutes of rest before I do that. Uh, that felt heavier than I remember 215 feeling the last time I did these, uh, which is all right. It happens sometimes. You give your best, the best of the energy you got, best of the strength you got on any given day. And that's what really counts. And it adds up more than you know over time, even if it's not your most well-recovered workout. A whole lot more than just the physical compounding, it's the mental. You stick to commitments. It rubs off on every other area of your life. Are you? Oh, really? Greasy black peel, Mr. Grinch, a foot pole. Ah, ah, is sir. Ooh. Uh, ah, ah, couldn't quite get there, but that did feel better than the first set did. It felt a little bit lighter, and I think what it was, I'm wearing some Air Max, I think they're 97s. They have such a high slant from your heel to your toe that it was, I think, pushing me over a little more and somehow messing with the lift a little bit, making it feel a little more awkward or heavy. Took those off, flat surface, felt easier. I'm attributing it to that. I don't know if that's for sure. Uh, generally, when I'm down there, I'm thinking this either feels heavier or it feels great, but regardless, all my focus is on moving the weight. I'm gonna do one more here. 
and then hit two sets of biceps, two sets of triceps. And I'm, so for triceps, I think I'm going to try something I saw on a YouTube short today by Jeff Nippard. And he was talking about kickbacks and how you can manipulate a kickback through a uh, cable pull down. Uh, but getting your elbow behind your body and then squeezing the muscle uh, does a little extra. He broke it down in a really sciencey way that at least sold me on it for today. We'll see how it feels when I feel it. I am going to put this on it. Can kind of manipulate this with the action. I know a lot of people just take the cable and put their hand above the ball. My ball broke off of the top pulley attachment, so I don't have that luxury. And uh, my balls are going to be broken tomorrow because I'm getting a vasectomy. So TMI? I don't know. Probably not. Probably have told you anyways. Ice and my balls doing another video. the wall on that one sets or reps five through eight were not full and didn't feel very strong and didn't get a good contraction on them but still got a great stimulus there went until I couldn't find the silver linings uh, just make note of what you feel that I'm learning that right now is to be less judgmental and more discerning there's a good way to get uh, you know, positive feedback loops on things you could do better or improve at. And there's the way most people do it, which is beating themselves up real bad. You can recognize those things, find the opportunities to grow within it, find and frame the good that's inside of it and use it as motivation to get better in the future at whatever it is you're trying to do. And now you're fired up to get after it. And now you feel like it comes from a place of love and loving yourself and not, I'll never measure up, and you're a loser, and you're blowing your shot, and all the things that come to your head that are not true. Um, that is demotivating, it takes the wind out of your sails, keeps you from action. So it's just reframing the same situation that you're enduring anyways, finding the good in it, finding ways to improve from it, and, and then getting yourself excited like, oh my gosh, I just recognized that, I'm gonna get that much better now. You get excited instead of drained. My son is listening to um, a voiceover Grinch story and pretending to steal Christmas by taking everything in my gym from over here and putting it over there. Oops. All right, here I go trying to um, recreate that kickback position so I'm going to lean into my bench here start with my elbow my elbow behind my back and uh, I'll play with it for a few reps to kind of try to find the right tension point I gotta keep my elbow back I don't know if I'm doing this right I don't know, something feels weird, weird about it. I'm going to finish on the other side just to even it out, but I don't think I'm going to do another set of that on something else. <clears throat> I think it's because of the attachment I'm using. There's like a whole lot of mental work to try to keep keep it working um, to get a good burn and balance it and find the right tension point and make sure my elbows behind me 
Uh, no thanks. <laughs> no, I won't get you, buddy. I look into the mirror while I do this. These are 50 pound dumbbells, by the way. I'm uh, feeling pretty good on these right now. I think I lost count. I think that's maybe five each. I don't know. I'll find out when I play this back. Excuse me, buddy. All right. Uh, the Grinch stole Christmas? Yeah. The Grinch stole Christmas because he was really unhappy. Huh? Yeah. What was happening? He was unhappy because uh, when he was a little boy, all the kids in his class made fun of him and teased him because he looked a little bit different and because he had a beard. And it was really not nice by the other kids. And so... You don't have it, Cindy. You're eight years old and you don't have a beard. Yeah, he said, you're, you're eight years old and you have a beard. And that made him feel really embarrassed and ashamed and unloved. And that wasn't very nice by those kids, huh? No. You know, he said, you don't have a Cindy. You're eight years old and you, and you don't... And and you? You, and you do have a beard. That's right. That's what they said. And that made him feel really upset, which then made him feel angry. And then he went to live by himself. And he was so... He threw the tree. He threw the tree. That's right. He made a big... Uh, he lost his temper. Got really angry. And so that's why he stole Christmas, because he saw them having so much fun at, at Christmas with their families and loving life. And he was all alone and miserable and not happy. And he, he thought, oh, I'm going to take Christmas away from them. Then they won't be happy. And then he did that. And, and that was really not nice by the Grinch, right? Hey, excuse me. And he said, I hate Christmas. He did say that. That's right. That's, that's just, hate's a strong word, right? We shouldn't say that. When, yeah. But anyway, so. I, I hate Christmas. No, you love Christmas, buddy. I, I love Christmas. That's where, you got, um, that's where you got a lot of your toys. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I got a present. Why the Grinch stole my Christmas sometimes? <laughs> the Grinch, uh, I don't think he did steal your Christmas. Daddy wouldn't let him in the house, buddy. You're safe at home. You know that? Bobby would fight him. Yeah, Bobby would fight him. I know you would. especially if Bobby would fight him with Buzz. With Buzz? Yeah. And especially if he was trying to get near Brielle, huh? You would not let him get near Brielle. You would fight him, wouldn't you? I would stop the gate. See... He can't come upstairs. Yeah, no, you would beat him. I know you would, because you're brave. Well, you guys are the gay all alone. Mm-hmm. Because you're a strong boy, and you're, you're really you're really brave. Does he, does he... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for this uh, this next set of tricep kickbacks, I'm just going to use a dumbbell. And who would have ever thought I would use my wife's um, bar class equipment here? But I'm going to. Here we go. If I remember, these are pretty difficult even with light weights, so this is 20 pounds. We'll see how it feels. Oh, yeah. That's a much better contraction than the cable that I was using. You got to be really intentional about not letting it swing down. It's so easy to just let it drop on this. Um, It's almost like my, like my trap or certain muscles in my back fail to keep my elbow high enough before my tricep really does. Oh. 
Ugh. Oh. Feeling like working my Latin serratus a little bit too. It's a weird movement. I haven't done kickbacks in a while. Uh. Uh. Flexing. <laughs> <laughs> 